Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. There is a gene called the ApoE4 gene that significantly increases your risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. You inherit these genes. Now, however, we will go into this uh, report, this episode on how you could fight back and minimize the risk for Alzheimer's disease. It is doable. So there's three variants of the uh, ApoE gene. And what it does, it brings lipids into the cells of your brain. Now, that's important because your brain is about 60% lipids. So what is a lipid? It's a fatty substance. It's part fat and part something else, like fish oils, vegetable oils. They mix with different things in the brain to make uh, different components of brain cells. So once again, there's three variants. There's the E2 variant, the E3 variant, and the E4 variant. The E2 variant is thought to lower your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So if you inherited that from both parents, that's wonderful. The E3 variant is neutral. It's a wash. It doesn't seem to increase the risk of Alzheimer's. It doesn't seem to be protective from Alzheimer's. It's just going on brain business as usual. The E4 gene, if you inherit one copy, it increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. But if you inherit a copy from both parents, you inherit two copies, then all the more dangerous. Uh, About 15% of Americans have the E4 variant of the gene, the ApoE4 variant of the gene. So that was an MIT study. Now, uh, remember I said ApoE genes bring lipids into the cell of the brain. The brain is approximately 60% lipids. So the E2 and the E3 variants of the gene do a good job with that. But the E4, instead of bringing lipids into the uh, cell, actually clogs up the process. Now, of course, I'm simplifying this, but the cells die because they get all clogged and inflamed and business is not going on as usual. So the MIT researchers found that the ApoE4 gene significantly disrupts the ability of your brain cells to carry out their normal functions, which is bad. I mean, you need them to think and solve problems, etc. However, they also uncovered a solution. We'll go into this and more about protecting your brain in a moment, but first... Hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a pharmacist who also has studied nutrition. I'm over here at Invite Health. I'm also the scientific director, and I'd like to talk to you today about how you can help reduce your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. It is doable. It is doable. The title of this episode is This Gene Increases the Risk of Alzheimer's, How to Fight Back. Please be sure to uh, subscribe to the Invite Health Podcast and please leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. All of the information on today's episode will be linked in the episode description, and you can visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast for all the episodes. So let's get started. There are proven ways to lower the risk of Alzheimer's disease, even if you have the genetic susceptibility, even if you have the ApoE4 variants of the gene where it increases the risk. So leading a wholesome, healthy life, getting enough sleep, really important because you detoxify and you rebuild your brain at night when you're sleeping. We've gone into this in other podcast episodes. Um, So sleep, really important. Also, if you have hearing loss, hearing loss is being increasingly tied into uh, memory loss uh, and also um, dementias. And they kind of have a hypothesis going on about that. Uh, What they're thinking is, uh, when you can't hear, you're taking other parts of the brain to help the auditory processing part of the brain. That's the part of the brain that translates sounds into language, etc. To help the auditory processing part of the brain do its job, this kind of creates a stressful environment in the brain, and these other parts of the brain are not doing their jobs, and somehow it affects your intellect. And it probably is true. So one thing you could do if you've lost hearing, a lot of people did, they wore those iPods and they had blasting music in their ears, um, get hearing aids. I mean, today they have sensational hearing aids that are little computerized hearing aids and you can, can barely see them. They can take 
horrible noises and make them lower. They can uh, take soft voices and make them louder. I mean, it's just amazing what they could do today with, with uh, the technology for hearing aids. So I would look into that. That's certainly a way, that really seems to be a way to lower the risk of Alzheimer's. Hearing loss tied into it, getting the hearing checked and getting it corrected with, with hearing aids, fantastic. Uh, another way is, of course, a great diet. Certain foods are potentially bad for the brain, like excess alcohol, smoking, a bad habit. Uh, it's not a food, but, you know, uh, a lot of saturated fat, a lot of sugar, not good for the brain. Uh, a healthy diet, lots of vegetables, some fresh fruit, uh, your salad, nuts and seeds, fish, things like that, great for the brain. Cocoa is great for the brain. Green tea is great for the brain. However, a caveat with green tea, don't put milk in it. It seems to bind up the ingredients. Instead, put a little lemon, squeeze a little lemon in there. And that actually improves the absorption of the critical ingredients in green tea that are good for the heart and the brain, etc. Um, exercise, good for the brain. No, no two ways about it. There's a number of supplements that are good for the brain, and we'll go into some of these uh, as they relate to the ApoE4 gene. ApoE4, once again, is the gene that increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So the MIT researchers found that the ApoE4 gene inhibits the ability of a brain cell to function normally and clogs up the brain cell, the transport system of the brain cell, and eventually causes the brain cells to die. But they found a solution. It's called choline. Now, choline is a widely available B-complex vitamin. It could reverse many of these effects, according to MIT, but we've done episodes on different forms of choline for the memory. I mean, it really does have a dramatic effect on the brain. The MIT scientists found that choline just really was reversing a lot of these effects. Here's the, here's the issue. Uh, it's hard to get choline into the brain. Choline is really important for the liver. Choline prevents fatty liver. Choline is really important for your heart muscle and your muscles in general and your nerve tissue. But you also need a lot of choline in your brain. Choline gets tagged with an acetyl group and it becomes acetylcholine. And acetylcholine has amazing effects in the brain. For one thing, acetylcholine allows you to capture data. Learning. You cannot learn without acetylcholine. Secondly, to get at what you've learned, memory, that's also acetylcholine. But acetylcholine is also tied into creating new memory cells at night when you go into deep sleep. Acetylcholine has some kind of activity in that process. At night, when you go into deep sleep, Sleep is a cycle that's about two and a half hours long, typically, uh, and you go into periods of deep sleep, delta wave sleep, where you're not dreaming, you're not trashing around, you're not moving around. A lot of things happen in delta wave sleep. One of the things that happens is you release nerve growth factors in different parts of the body, including in the brain. One of them, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and young people, when they go into deep sleep, Every night they could recreate 600 brand new memory cells. We didn't know this like 10 years ago. This was only discovered about nine years ago. So when you go to sleep at night and you're young and healthy, uh, you release this uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor and you create about 600 new memory cells, which is important because the day before you lost some memory cells. So you have to keep pace with that. You have to replace the ones you lost. However, when you hit, seems to be late 40s, you're releasing less and less brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and eventually there's a tipping point. You're losing more memory cells than you're replacing. You don't have any cognitive reserve anymore, and that can affect your memory. So um, choline, a B vitamin, is needed to create acetylcholine, and this helps. It has some kind of activity in there with the release of the nerve growth factors to heal the brain and create new memory cells. The problem is typical choline supplements do not get into the brain. There are certain forms that get into the brain very easily, like CDP choline. So taking krill oil is a fantastic way to get choline into your brain because in krill oil, it's phosphatidylcholine. And phosphatidylcholine is very easily absorbed into the brain and incorporated into the brain cells. <clears throat> so they found that if you had enough acetylcholine, which you'll make out of the phosphatidylcholine, uh, that helps offset many of the issues with uh, a problem with the ApoE4 gene. Now, of course, more research is needed for that. So ApoE is a, a sort of a delivery service to our brain cells. It supplies the neurons, the brain cells, with important nutrients. These are incorporated into the building blocks for the cells by lipid layer. That's the external layers of the cells.
So for instance, the phosphatidylcholine and krill oil and some other ingredients are incorporated into the outside of the brain cell, which helps prevent the brain cell from stiffening, from decay, and helps keep it functioning properly for a good mood and for a great function of the brain and, and the healthiest memory level you can have. Now, additionally, the lipids that are delivered by the ApoE genes are converted into endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids affect a receptor site in the brain uh, called CB1, and this is involved with preventing anxiety, um, preventing stress, calming down the body, balancing the brain, balancing your internal clock, your internal rhythms. That's really important. That's called a circadian rhythm. So at night you go to sleep and your, your immune system calms down and rebuilds and you're building bone at night and you're learning at night because anything you learn in the daytime you really put into your memory banks at night. And then in the morning uh, the circadian kicks off and the rhythm and you wake up and uh, your sugar increases a little bit, and your circulation increases a little bit, your blood pressure increases a little bit, your body temperature increases a little bit, and your immune system starts to get going. So when your internal clock is off, your immune system doesn't know what's supposed to get going in the daytime. Your immune system kind of relaxes at night when you go to sleep because you're alone in your bed typically. I mean, you're not mixing it up with a crowd of people at work. But in the daytime, you really need a high function of your immune system. If your internal clock is off, that not only affects bone building and regeneration of brain tissue and knowing what is up and what is down, like do I wake up now or do I go to sleep, but also your immune system. So it's really important. So the ApoE, when it delivers these things into the bilipid layer, this is responsible for a lot of things that make you healthy and, and, and function well and live a long, healthy life. Now, the endocannabinoids, the, the uh, lipids that are delivered by the ApoE genes are converted into endocannabinoids. And these regulate not being stressed, not being anxious, being calm, being focused, having brain energy, and resyncing your circadian rhythm, your, your, your internal clock. So it's very important. Because they also they have many functions in the brain, these endocannabinoids, including memory functions, but also controlling the brain's immune system thereby protecting your brain from inflammation. So there are several things you could do to support the endocannabinoid system in your brain. You could take CBD. We call it hemp. Uh, CBD is cannabidiol. It doesn't hit the CB1 receptor sites. It triggers them to function properly for a proper circadian rhythm. But also a well-absorbed turmeric. Turmeric is the curry herb. It's that herb that gives curry its, its characteristic color and odor and flavor. I love curry. And uh, uh, so the, the, the main ingredient in there is curcumin, but there's a lot of important ingredients. If it's well absorbed, it gets into the brain and it acts as an endocannabinoid. That's one reason why uh, they're looking at treating fear and post-traumatic stress disorder not just with CBD, but also they're looking at doing it with turmeric. Very interesting. And turmeric has a known effect on protecting the brain. The Edith Cowan uh, Research Institution over in um, Australia has used our biocurcumin in about five studies over there in, in uh, uh, adults with Alzheimer's disease. It seems to help, uh, a well-absorbed curcumin that can get into the brain seems to help protect the brain from a buildup of plaque. It seems to help break down the plaque. Several nutrients have been shown to do that. The green tea, especially the EGCG, has been shown to help break down plaque in the brain, especially if, if it's in the brain at the same time as fish oils. They work together to help break down plaques in the brain. Uh, the other one is, is curcumin, turmeric. That seems to break down plaque in the brain. There's about three well-absorbed curcumins on the market. We have two of them. One is the one where they add biopurine from black pepper. We call it our curcumin complex under our Dr. Pressman line, but also biocurcumin. Then there's a third one that, so, that UCLA has been doing research with. The problem with that one, to me, it's a little too low a dosage, so I'm sticking with the two I have. So the ApoE genes transport uh, these polyunsaturated fatty acids from vegetables and from fish oils into the cell in the brain by a process called endocytosis. So it delivers the nutrients in little pouches onto the cellular membrane, and then the cell has ways of 
incorporating it into the cellular membrane to help keep the cell functional and active and young and, and supple. So there's a new study in the Journal of Alzheimer's uh, and Dementia. It's researchers at Sharit University Medical Center. That's in Berlin. That's like the oldest medical center in the world. Uh, ApoE4 clogs endocytosis. So it clogs, that's the ApoE4 one, the one that increases risk of Alzheimer's. So it clogs the delivery system. It's damaged. The supply chain grinds to a halt. Gray cells, uh, the gray cells, your, your memory cells become inflamed and die. This also occurs with aging, by the way. So the risk of Alzheimer's disease, disease in people with the ApoE4 gene variant increases their risk of Alzheimer's disease by 12-fold, greater than people with the E3 variant, which is the most common. So um, E4, once again, is 15% of our population. So let's look at some of the data on nutrients besides uh, CBD or biocurcumin or krill oil, you know, for choline. This is the Journal of Nutrition, Health, and Aging. And it's from the National University of Singapore, the National University Health System in Singapore. That's a very wealthy country. I mean, basically, Singapore fills up, the, the, the city fills up the whole island. It's 957 uh, elderly Chinese people. They live at home. They're not institutionalized. They're not in nursing homes. And they were contacted in a between 2003 and 2010 and followed for a number of years. Now, a total of 72 of them, 72 out of 957 over that short amount of time developed neurocognitive disorders, you know, things like severe memory loss or Alzheimer's. And uh, they found out that green tea lowered the risk of neurocognitive disorders. Many studies, by the way, are showing this, even though I'm just uh, referring to one study, there's many studies I have in my folders where green tea helps preserve memory functions and brain function in aging people. So there's a lot of benefits to green tea. But once again, don't put milk in your green tea. It, teams, it tends to bind the good ingredients that are good for your brain and your heart. It, put, squeeze a little lemon into it. That seems to protect them from your digestive juices. You actually absorb them better. It makes them more bioavailable. So they found that um, even in people who had a problem, with the apple e4 gene it was helpful so let's look at the figures um green tea reduced the risk of neurocognitive disorders by 57 percent where black tea or oolong tea reduced the risk by 47 percent so green tea was superior i would go with green tea every time believe me it seems to be superior in every way so if they were consistent non-tea consumers Compared to consistent green tea consumers, green tea reduced the risk of neurocognitive disorders by 61%. But even in people who are ApoE4 carriers, even in people with a heightened risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, that is a very important finding. So here's a, a study. Uh, oh, and I mentioned before that mixing curcumin with fish oils helps work better in the brain. So here's the journal Nutrients. It's the School of Biomedical Sciences and, and the Pharmacy School, University of Newcastle, that would be Australia, the University of Southern Queensland, and the University of South Australia. It's a 16-week randomized placebo-controlled double-blind human clinical trial, and it's published in a peer-reviewed journal called Nutrients. Peer-reviewed means uh, a team of experts in the field look at the study and conclude it's either a good study or don't print the study. So this was a good study. They supplemented uh, overweight or even obese people between the age of 50 to 80 with curcumin and fish oils or, uh, or either one. So they gave them either fish oils or they gave them curcumin or they gave them both fish oils with curcumin or they gave them a placebo. So there was four different groups. Curcumin was especially helpful. Curcumin improved vigor compared to placebo and reduced subjective memory complaints. In other words, a subjective memory complaint means you know you're losing memory, but everybody else is telling you, nah, you're fine, Harry, you don't have any problem. That's subjective memory complaints. So their memory was better. Obviously, they were remembering names and faces and words better. Fish oils also improved brain health, but the only one that helped the ApoE4 carriers, the ones with a heightened risk of Alzheimer's, was the curcumin, was the turmeric. So turmeric, once again, 
uh, a good supplement for the brain. So here's a study in the journal Nutrition, Gerontology, and Geriatrics. It's a, a, a whole group of academic research in, institutions, uh, the University of York in England, the University of Newcastle in Australia, Heracopia University over in Athens, Greece, the Faculty of Health, University of Canberra, and, and a whole bunch of others. <laughs> you know, when they do these in, interesting studies, a lot of these academic research in, institutions are interacting to do these studies. So they're looking at a level of a byproduct of B-complex and protein metabolism called homocysteine. And they're looking at people, healthy people without Alzheimer's and aged matched people with Alzheimer's. So if there was a person 75 with Alzheimer's, there was a person in the study 75 without Alzheimer's disease. So here's what they found. Yes, more of the people with Alzheimer's had the ApoE4 variant. It doesn't mean that if you have the other two variants, ApoE2 and ApoE3, you can't develop Alzheimer's. If you drink a lot of alcohol, you eat a terrible diet, you never exercise, you never get sleep, you could still wind up getting Alzheimer's. So, But you kind of earned it. Whereas people with the ApoE4 variant, they have to be additionally vigilant in, 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 in being healthy. That's why I'm not against testing for this variant. Because if you know you have it, you're really going to go out of your way to live healthy and help protect your brain. So they found in general people with Alzheimer's, the ApoE4 variant was more common. But they found that it was also tied into elevated homocysteine and a lack of active folic acid. A lack of active folic acid. Folic acid, the active form, is methyl tetrahydrofolate. It reduces homocysteine. And they found there was a, a recent study in Japan, by the way, about a week ago, when they gave elderly Japanese patients with some memory loss uh, active folate, their memory improved. So there really is a tie in with folate. And they found that uh, women with a higher intake of natural folate had a much lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. They, they found the same thing for vitamin B2. If their folate or their vitamin B2 intake was too low, terrible for the brain. Folate does a lot of things. It lowers homocysteine. It helps create, it helps protect your genes. It helps lower the risk of cancers. Um, whereas uh, riboflavin, vitamin B2, is involved with energy production, but it's also a super powerful antioxidant everywhere in the body. So here's another study, the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. It's the School of Public Health the University of Minnesota over in Minneapolis. And they're looking at Alzheimer's disease in the NUN study. Is folate involved? That's what they're doing in this study. So this is a really interesting study. In the nun study, uh, which is ongoing, they found that um, it, some nuns, even though um, uh, on autopsy, they had damage in their brain that would signify Alzheimer's, their brain went on functioning. So that's what they found in this study. They found that a number of these nuns should have had Alzheimer's, but never developed the symptoms and that was strongly tied into a higher level of folate in the blood. And once again, the active form of folate is methyl tetrahydrofolate. You really don't want folic acid because some people can't convert folic acid into methyl tetrahydrofolate. If you get a supplement, try to get methyl tetrahydrofolate. So here, they, I mean, this is important. Even if there's the beginning of Alzheimer's disease, it was slowing the progression and helping the brains function normally, and they weren't displaying the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Oh, here's that study on the elderly Japanese. Uh, folate supplementation for two months could improve cognition and cognitive functions in people with folate deficiency and mild cognitive impairment. So let me explain what that is. In mild cognitive impairment, there's probably been a little bit of shrinkage of the brain, and they're just not getting it. Like they can't, people with that, they can't understand complex um, instructions. Like if they get a new cell phone, they're going to have trouble figuring it out. If they get a new car with a GPS system, they're going to have trouble figuring it out. If they buy a grill and they're trying to put it together in the backyard for barbecuing, they can't figure it out. And they have memory loss. They have frank memory loss. The problem is they could still function in society. The problem is most of those people will go on to develop Alzheimer's disease. So simply giving these people folate over a two-month period was improving brain function. I mean, there really is something to folate and, and, uh, and mental function. Folate, folate, by the way, also lowers the first two steps in the cancer process, initiation and promotion. Typically, the, the cancer process is broken down into four steps. Initiation, that could be like radiation or a virus or a toxic food or something, damages a gene inside your chromosome. Promotion, it gets worse. That could be anything. 
It could be a chemical, it could be a drug, it could be a, the sun's radiation, it could be a virus again, it could be anything. And then there's cancer, and then there's metastasis, where the cancer break is moving around the body, which is really bad. So, I actually am going to have my genes tested to make sure I don't have the ApoE4 gene. And if I do, I'll just fight against it. I mean, come on. I mean, I'll be even more uh, restrictive than I am already with my diet. Because I do cheat a little. I am human. But in any event, here are some recommendations. Uh, in general, for the health of the brain, getting a good choline supplement is good for the brain. And as far as I could see, the, the most cost-effective, like least expensive, because some of the cholines, some of the exotic cholines, like CDP choline, city choline, are really expensive. Go with krill oil. It has the kind of choline that gets into your brain and works in your brain cell. It has phosphatidylcholine. So get krill oil and take like two every morning with your breakfast and you're getting a really good source of choline and we know you're going to be getting it every day because you might not be eating choline-rich foods every day. The second thing is, uh, and that also covers fish oils. Second thing, I think you want to get turmeric curry into your life. I would actually recommend taking maybe a turmeric capsule with a meal once a day, every day. Because in general, the studies show that when you give an older person turmeric, a well-absorbed turmeric, even one capsule, like 250 to 500 milligrams, their memory improves for hours after. But it also helps seed the brain with new memory cells because it also helps you release brain-derived neurotrophic factor, that nerve growth factor, when you go into deep sleep at night. So you seed the brain with new memory cells. That's pretty cool. Drink green tea. Get an organic green tea. It has to be organic because they spray green tea with DDT to get rid of mosquitoes so people don't get malaria. Now, you don't want DDT. It's got a 50-year half-life. So if DDT starts building up in your breasts, the DDT you had five years ago is still in your breasts 45 years from now. So it, 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 it has a 50-year half-life in human tissue. So that means if you're drinking green tea every day with DDT in it, it's just building up. It's not good for you because it's an estrogen. It's a bad estrogen. It's a xenoestrogen. Um, drink organic green tea and squirt a little lemon into it. Or take a, a good, a really high-quality green tea supplement. That's that's acceptable. Because it's the EGCG mixed with the other catechins that does the job. Um, now, what else? Um, you want to make sure you get uh, a multivitamin that doesn't have folic acid. Instead, it has methyl tetrahydrofolate. That's the form that really protects the brain. Now, what about other things? You have to get sleep at night. Sleep is incredibly important to ongoing good brain function, but also your immune system, also building bones. I mean, it just does a lot of things deep sleep. Learning and remembering, repairing the brain, building bones, resetting your immune system. So if you're not sleeping well at night, uh, you could consider taking CBD. CBD is interesting. In the daytime, it gives you energy, and at night, it helps you calm down and go to sleep. Or you could take a melatonin, like 3 milligrams, a, a 15 minutes before bed with minimal water because you don't want the water to wake you up to go to the bathroom. Um, in fact, you could take a melatonin with CBD. That might be the best thing to do. Um, so you need your sleep. You need exercise. Exercise is really good for feeding and nourishing the brain and getting blood into the brain. Um, you want to get your hearing checked. If you've lost hearing, very bad for the brain. Increases your risk of dementia. You want to get your blood pressure under control so you don't have little blood clots in the brain. Um, plus, when you have high blood pressure, your blood is circulating at a very fast, harsh rate, and, and it's it's whipping around your circulatory system, and it's banging into your blood vessels and damaging them where they twist and turn, where there's any torque. So you want your blood pressure under control. You want your blood sugar under control. You want to try to keep away fat. fat and The fat on your belly inflames your brain. Not a good thing. Uh, those are some recommendations for really helping to lower your risk of Alzheimer's disease, along with a really exceptional diet. If you want a good diet, you can email me, jhickey at infighthealth.com, jhickey at infighthealth.com. I'll send you the MIND diet. The MIND diet is, was developed by the Rush Institute over in Chicago. They study aging, and they took the best of the uh, DASH diet. The DASH diet was developed to help control your blood pressure and your heart health along with the best parts of the Mediterranean diet. And they put together, and they put people on this diet, and the people who really stuck with the diet, they had a much lower risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's disease. I mean, it really meant something. It really meant something. So I could send you that diet, but I'll give you a couple of more tips. There's other healthy foods that they left out of the diet that I would like you to incorporate into that diet. So thank you for tuning into the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or visit invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please 
subscribe, please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Invite Health. I hope to see you another time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. God bless. Thank you.